Welcome to Bet On at the NFC preview show. I am Kelly Stewart at Kelly in Vegas on all of your social media channels. Today I'm joined by Marco D'Angelo and Teddy Covers of wagertalk.com. We're getting right into it, boys. The NFC East, the division where you never see a repeat unless your name is the Eagles. Let's see what Marco D'Angelo has to say first. I know Teddy Covers has a best bet from this division coming up at the end of the show. Well, Kelly, you look at this division, and basically it's two teams in the division as it's been pretty much forever. Uh, you look at the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, they were your typical schoolyard bully last year. They beat up on the bad teams, but when they faced the playoff team, they were just 3-5 and five last year. Uh, they benefited from the soft schedule, and they didn't beat a single team last year on the road with a winning record. Um, Cowboys, you know, a lot was made of it. They did nothing to improve their roster in the offseason. So for me, I look at Dallas, and they're going to be second best in the NFC East. So who does that leave as the best team in the NFC East? Well, it'll probably make our producer quite happy with this pick, but it's the Eagles. You know, last year, uh, the Super Bowl jinx reared its ugly head with Philadelphia. Uh, they got off to the great start, 10-1, and one, but then the wheels fell off uh, this bandwagon very quickly. A lot of uh, dissension maybe on the team. Every break that they got the year before in the Super Bowl season, we know how good they were that year with turnovers. Nothing went their way down the stretch last year, finishing the season up 1-6. in six. Uh, And because of it, well, somebody had to go. Somebody's head had to roll, and – when the head coach is going to protect himself, he's going to point the blame to somebody else. Um, and those uh, heads that fell were both the offensive coordinator and the defensive coordinator. Enter this year, Kellen Moore and Vic Fangio. So two names that should be able to improve both sides of the football. I'm counting on it. They had a big off season as well. Signed Barkley at running back. Now, I know people say running backs are a dime a dozen in the NFL anymore. I don't think Barkley is one of those dime a dozen running backs. I think he's going to help this team immensely, uh, give them stability in the running game. And you've got a good offense, good passing game. We always say a running game makes a quarterback better. And with Jalen Hurts, not only do you have to worry about the passing game, but he can take off with the ball and run. I think this is their division to win. I also think that they will go over that 10 and a half win total. Teddy covers. Do you have a rebuttal here about the Eagles? I certainly do not. I bet against this team last year and boy, did I not deserve that sweat? I'll say that much, uh, but the Bucks got it done for me in the playoffs. So I did not have to worry about those Eagles winning a few games that they were not supposed to. As far as bottom feeders go, I've heard nothing besides Daniel Jones's beard in regards to the Giants and, of course, the new hype surrounding the commander's quarterback, Jalen Daniels. So let me start with this. There's nobody I like in this division, all right? This is my <laughs> mind. All four teams have pretty strong bet against capability. So it's important to note, if you don't, I mean, it's clearly from an uh, odds, odds to win the division standpoint, you know, Philly and Dallas are the two teams that have taken all the money the G-men and Washington are both real long shots. And when you don't like the favorites, well, maybe take a look at the long shots because uh, I think Dallas is vulnerable. We'll talk about them a little bit later uh, in the show. For Philadelphia, look, they shouldn't have been 10-1 and one last year. They were unbelievably lucky to go 10-1. and one. There was at least five of those games that Philly legit could have, probably should have lost, and the coin flips kept coming in Philadelphia's favor. That didn't happen down the stretch. But I'm not convinced that roster is fixed. I'm not convinced that defense is fixed. And I'm not convinced the relationship between Hertz and his head coach is fixed. A relationship that, you know, when we're reading about it in public, it means it's reached a level that we're starting to read about it in public. So I don't look at Philly and Dallas as being bet on or bet on. So that leaves us with the G-men or Washington. The G-men on paper, I think, have the worst roster or one of the worst rosters in the NFL. That's not a team I'm excited about. So I guess I'm going to talk about Washington as your bet on team from this division. You know, they made the right decision with the quarterback. All right, let's start the rookie. They brought in, what, six new potential starters on defense. 
it could be a completely revitalized defense from a, a year ago. This is a team that was, what, 29th in turnover margin. One would expect that to get a little bit better. On paper, there's a lot to like about Dan Quinn's team. And it's not like Quinn is a coach who we said, oh, he never did anything. Yeah, he blew a Super Bowl for me, which I will never forgive him. Nonetheless, he got a team that had never been to the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl before. I think Dan Quinn is a guy that Dallas is going to miss in terms of his coordinating abilities on the defensive side. And maybe gives a spark to the commanders. New ownership, signs pointed upwards for Washington. Ooh, Teddy says the NFC least is real. Look for the least popular team as far as the betting market goes and take the commanders. Teddy, I'm going to kick it right back to you. We're going out to the NFC West with the Super Bowl losers right on top. We all know that we should be fading these teams off a Super Bowl loss, but boy, I do not want to fade this 49ers team. Yeah, so the clients and I cashed a season win bet on Philadelphia under their season win total last year, which was a miracle to cash after that 10-1 start. We did not cash our bet on San Francisco under their the season win total last year. That was one of the losers uh, that we had. Um, I'm tempted to do it again, <laughs> you know, with the Super Bowl loser. That being said, you grade out the 49ers personnel, and this team's every bit as elite this year as they were last year. I mean, they really are. There's not a weakness on the team. They deserve to be the favorites to win this division, and I'm not in a rush to step in front of San Fran. What's interesting is the battle between the other three, Seattle, L.A., Arizona. Certainly, we think about Stafford and the Rams overachieving last year and winning a Super Bowl, a team that may have some potential. Seattle's a squad that I've heard a lot of people talk about. They expect some upside this year, new head coach there, although Geno Smith's not a quarterback I'm particularly excited about. Arizona, to me, is an interesting team. And we're looking for, again, season-long bets. Marco was on the show last week, the AFC, talking about Aaron Rodgers, they have comeback player of the year. I thought that was a reasonable bet to make. You're looking for a long shot, comeback player of the year? Kyler Murray's live. You can find him 30. If you shop around, I was looking around before we came on air. He's anywhere from 20 to 1 to 35 to 1. If you're going to make the bet, find the 35 to 1, not the 20 to 1. That's why we shop around for these numbers. Uh, but I think Kyler Murray is very much live. If Arizona is any good, and I think they might be, certainly a 4-13 and team last year, if they improve and be a 500-level team this year, Kyler Murray will be in the mix for that award. And certainly from we talk about offseason, the reports at Arizona where everyone hated Kyler Murray and he was the worst teammate in history, well, this past offseason, Kyler Murray lived at the facility. Everyone loves him now. Um, so from a team chemistry standpoint, maybe Kyler Murray's worth a shot uh, as a NFL comeback player of the year. Marco, maybe Kyler Murray put down the video game controller and picked up a protein shake. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. Heard some rumors mm -hmm. myself about that Cardinals team. But you know a team that I've heard almost next to nothing about? The Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, Kelly, and I – I'm not going to say a lot about them because I don't like them. Uh, I'll start with I'm not a big Geno Smith fan, so that you know is in line with what Teddy said. The other fact is you're replacing a legend as a head coach. You know Pete Carroll, whether you like him or you don't like him, I mean he got results. Um, he's gone. In comes a new head coach, and when you get a new head coach coming in, it's not an instant fix. Um, you know you've got. You can't turn a roster completely over in one off season, okay? So he's got the leftovers of Pete Carroll's team. He's got to build his own team. That's going to take a little bit of time. I don't see Seattle making a step forward this year. Two years ago, they surprised everybody uh, making the playoffs. Geno Smith had that great year. He had something to prove, that's for sure. He got a shot when they got rid of Russell Wilson. He had nothing to lose. He got the job done. He got some money for it. Now we might see the Geno Smith that we saw in New York all of those years. And the Rams, I think, is going to take a regression this year as well. They had a great run last year, uh, got to the playoffs. Nobody thought they were going to be a factor last year. They expected a drop off. You know, every year they say Stafford's over the hill and he got the job done last year. And they probably should have won that game in Detroit. But they lost a big, big piece to this team, and it's the heart and soul of that defense uh, with Darnold being uh, – or 
excuse me, Donald retiring. He was one of the best in the game. They're going to miss his pass rush. They're going to miss the pressure on the quarterback. And when you can't get the pressure on the quarterback, that's going to expose the Rams secondary. So where does that leave us? Well, yeah, the obvious choice is San Francisco to win the division, but I am high on Arizona and Kyler Murray is the reason. When he came back last year, remember, he had a horrible injury, didn't come back. Um, until the second half of the season last year. There were a lot of speculation whether he would even play last year. Well, they only went three and five straight up in his uh, return. But remember, he was rusty and so forth, learning the offense again. But the all-important but, they were five and three against the spread in the eight games when he returned last year. So I expect Arizona to make a step forward this year. And where I'm going, I'm going to go over the season win total with them. They're sitting at six and a half. I like them over the six and a half wins. And you know what? That Super Bowl hangover, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take San Francisco under the season win total of 10 and a half uh, because this division I don't think is going to be that strong. But there is one thing I'm going to point out on San Francisco. If you look at their schedule, and look at the end of it. From November 24th on, they play back-to-back -back road games at Green Bay and Buffalo. Two tough teams, two playoff teams. Then they come home, play Chicago, only to play four days later on a short week against uh, division rival the Rams. And then on a Thursday night home game, they uh, that's the short week. Then they go to Miami. Then they go to Detroit. and. They've got uh, Arizona to finish out the season. That's in a really tough schedule of out-of-division games and then uh, the division rivals. I don't see them getting over the 10-and-a-half. Those are my two plays out of the West. Ooh, Marco thinks that uh, Brock Purdy is turning into a pumpkin. I am not going to. Why? Because I've got these glasses on. And you know what that means. It's time for some TNA with our good friend, Ralph Michaels. No, I don't think uh, Ralph and I planned these outfits, but we are twinning today here on Bat On It. Ralph Michaels, you have a twin set of uh, charts for me as well. You know, Kelly, I enjoyed last week's segment that we did, you know, uh, on the breakdown, the first half of the breakdowns. But let's be honest, let's get to, to some actionable week one information. I didn't want to wait to week one bet on it to share this because there's a lot of people that are going to make a lot of week one bets now. So let's get them some data to make sure they're aware of before they make any week one NFL bets. First, Kelly, I talked about this last year with you on bet on it, but we should be reminding people if we could see the NFL week one dogs chart since 2013. Kelly, are you surprised that if I told you every week one dog since 2013, if you bet every underdog, you have cashed 56.4%. That is a strong, strong statement. And if you look at away dogs to plus seven, so that means short away dogs, plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five, to plus six and a half, they are 60.5%. I didn't list those teams because it's easy enough to go to the Wager Talk live on screen and see who the way dogs are. But look at this subset, Kelly. Division dogs in week one. So you've played your division foe. You are a dog, a division dog in week one. Those teams have gone 70.6% against the spread. 36, 15, and 1 ATS. And division home dogs? 15 and 4, 78.9%. The division dogs this year, the Raiders, the Panthers, and the Colts. And there, of course, is only one division home dog that fits into that 79% category. That is the Indianapolis Colts. I love it. I love it. If you guys watched that AFC preview last week, you know how high I am on those Indianapolis Colts. Those dogs are barking NFL week one. Ralph, what else do you have for us? Kelly, this is one I just found a couple years ago, and I had never really thought to run the query. But how do non-playoff teams from the previous year 
do in week one against the playoff team. So obviously one team is coming into the season with negative expectations or negative results, while one team was likely fat and sassy because they made the playoffs. This goes back to 2005. So this is a massive sample size just to show you how many years this system has worked. If you blindly bet every non-playoff team that is playing a playoff team in week one, you have covered 58.3%. If that non-playoff team was also on the road, you covered 61.1%. And if that non-playoff team is now an away dog of plus three or more, you have covered 66% against the spread going 31 and 16. There are four teams that fit that away dog of plus three or more non-playoff team. The Jets plus against San Francisco, Washington plus against Tampa Bay, Jacksonville plus against Miami, and Arizona plus against Buffalo. And on the bottom, Let's look at non-playoff teams versus playoff teams when the non-playoff team is at home. You see that the home teams are 56.1%. So not a wow number, but something you should pay attention to. But look at this. If you have a team that did not make the playoffs, and now they're a home favorite of minus two or more against a team that did make the playoffs, those teams have gone 13 and three 81.2%. There is one this year, Kelly. There was one non-playoff team that is a home favorite against the team that made the playoffs. The one team that fits that 81.2% system is the Atlanta Falcons versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. My group chat last night, I said, in non-prime time, Kirk, we trust. Can't wait to share that chart with the group chat at Cal Sports LV. That is Ralph Michaels. He is going to be sharing all of your NFL trends and data on his Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Maybe I can even get him to get a TikTok, you guys. We're going to find out. You know a guy who does a lot of TikToking? Yeah, his name is Andy Lang, and he's coming up hot with some prop shop. I, I absolutely love TikTok. I love being spied on. Um, I, actually have an, I actually have a next door neighbor. Uh, that spies on us. And uh, at least she is like, is at, like, does it like just looking through the windows? It's, it's, it, but with the phone, I mean, with the phone, they're just right up in your grill as uh, okay, I use my, as I, I use my face ID to I log into start? it. What did I just start? Uh, Andy, no, uh, you it's, are, a, it's, are... A, it's, it's a real thing. It's a real thing that, 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 that I deal with is this poor woman. Um, she's kind of lonely. And yeah, she just peeks in our windows every once in a while. Okay, great. Well, anyway, guys, I wanted to start off the segment with a tweet that I found and I sent to Andy the other day and I said, are we doing this? So it's from uh, at the real Mr. ACL. So I'm going to trust his data here. If you blindly bet every single wide receiver to go under his total number of touchdown receptions prop last year, you would have won 70% of your bets. Also, you would have won 64% in 2022, 68% in 2021 and 62% in 2020. Andy, why are we not blindly betting these receivers under touchdown props? Because we know that the general public is only going to bet one way, and that is, of course, the over. I mostly only take unders on my futures. Um, on the AFC episode, we did an under, uh, but I know people like uh, betting overs, so I thought I would come with an over this week and let's take an over on an injury prone wide receiver right how fun is this let's no, no, take it no, over no, on free... I, no 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 i did not agree to that i just gave you yeah some data oh we're gonna do it oh we're doing this oh we're doing this we're, <sighs> we're gonna take christian we're gonna take christian watson over five and a half touchdown receptions it's plus 105. So let's talk about the bad with Christian Watson. 2022, he only plays 14 games with a hamstring injury. 2023, he only plays nine games due to a hamstring injury. So what does he do in the offseason, Kelly? He goes to the University of Wisconsin. They specialize in hamstring injuries. Shout out to the Badgers. Uh, they discover that his right leg has a 20% difference in strength 
than the left leg. And that's what's causing his injuries to this leg. So they just did an interview with him about a month ago, and he talked about how he's got it down to 10%. He says he feels a lot better. There's a lot less strain on one leg. Uh, August 7th, he kind of bangs up his knee a little bit in practice. So they don't have him doing much in preseason these days, but why would you have him doing anything in preseason? So that's the bad. That's that's the worst thing about Christian Watson is this nagging hamstring issue that he has. Let's talk about the good things. So 2022 is rookie year. He does play 14 games, has 41 catches and seven touchdowns. So 17% of his catches were touchdowns. 2023, he plays nine games, has 28 catches and five touchdowns. Here we go again. 18% of his catches were touchdowns. What's interesting is four of those touchdowns were in his last three games of the regular season. He hurts his hamstring uh, in late August. He's limited throughout the season. He seems to get healthier. He gets four touchdown catches, re-injures his hamstring December 3rd. That's the last regular season game we see of him. He does play a little bit in the playoffs, but very limited, doesn't do much. So we've seen some good production from him, and catching touchdowns, 17% of your receptions, is pretty good. So... In 2023, Jordan Love throws 32 touchdowns. Jaden Reed plays 16 games. Romeo Dobbs plays 17 games. They both have eight touchdown catches. That leads the team. Number three is Christian Watson. He only played nine games, five touchdown catches. He's still third on the team. So in a season where he only played nine games, was not at 100% in a majority of those games, he was still third on the team and got to five touchdown catches. We only need to add one more touchdown catch this year. So I need him to get one more touchdown for his career. 18% of his catches go for touchdowns. I only need him to catch 36 passes. If that math holds up, if he catch 36 passes, six of them are going to be touchdowns. Jordan Love is one more year experienced. He's better. PFF has the Vikings secondary ranked 27th. The Bears are 19th coming into the season. And the Lions gave up the sixth both receiving touchdowns last year. And by the way, two of Christian Watson's touchdowns were against the Detroit Lions. We just need him to stay a little bit healthy, and it's a big if. But if Christian Watson has even remotely fixed a little bit of this hamstring issue, I think he gets there pretty easily, especially if he could just not get hurt in the first half of the year. It's a big ask, but a plus money. I'm willing to roll the dice on it over here. I can't believe I came so prepared with a beautiful tweet, and Andy Lang went contrarian on me, but of course he did. So what Andy is known best for at Bump Sports on X, at Andy Lang Bets on Instagram, and of course, I think it's also that on TikTok. Andy, a little cohesiveness would go a long way. We appreciate you each and every week. We know you're going to be bringing us a best prop bet. Go ahead. What do you got to say? If they would invent the apps at the exact same time, yes, we would all have the exact same name. They oh, invent Marcus one app, Kelly then you put your name this? five years later, there's another one. Then five years later, there's another one. And then we all end up with different names on all the different ones. So talk to uh, your boy, uh, Zuckerberg and Elon, to get their uh, you-know-what together. I cannot. Andy Lang, wt.buzz backslash AL to get all of Andy's Well, futures bets in regards to the prop market. Andy and I are going to be doing lots of stuff each week here on Bet On It. Speaking of Bet On It, we are now available on all of your favorite podcast networks, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and a few more. Let's kick it back to Marco and, of course, our good friend Teddy Covers for some NFC North and some NFC South. The black and blue division, uh, yeah, (laughs) sometimes they make the betters better black and blue uh, backing them. But it's an interesting division because, well, you've got, you know, Detroit, the Kool-Aid, the blue Kool-Aid is pouring in Detroit and they delivered last year. So why not? Green Bay, big story last year. What was going to happen with Jordan Love? Well, if you watched the first half of the season with Jordan Love, it wasn't too promising. Uh, He was stepping in for Aaron Rodgers and didn't look like he was going to be able to get the job done. But boy, did he change things around in the second half of the season. Granted, it was against a soft schedule, and that's what everybody's pointing out. But you know what? He got off to a bad start, and for a quarterback that was making his first season as a starter and following the legend, a Hall of Famer, you know, a lot of pressure was on him, and he could have easily folded up like a cheap suit. He didn't. 
He actually put up some of the best numbers over the second half of the season of all the quarterbacks in the NFL. It got him paid. So the big question is, now that he got the payday, will he continue that? I think he will. Uh, Detroit, yeah, they're the logical choice. But where I'm going to go with this one is I'm going to take Green Bay to win the division at a big number. We're getting plus 230 on them. And I think it's worth the risk considering if you look at the season win totals, the season win totals are 10 and a half for Detroit and 10 for Green Bay. So do I want to take Detroit as a favorite or do I want to take Green Bay that the uh, bookmakers say there's only a half a game difference with? And if Jordan Love takes the ne next step forward, this Green Bay team is a good playoff contender and they got experience last year and confidence in winning a uh, playoff game on the road. Granted, it was against the Dallas Cowboys, and we all like to make fun of Dak and company in the playoffs, but they got the job done on the road. That uh, builds a lot of confidence for a young quarterback. Give me Green Bay to win the division, and I'm going to take Detroit under the 10.5 for my two plays out of this division. Well, Marco just got fired. Uh, so on that note, Teddy, do you agree with them here with Green Bay to win the division? Marco played them last year as well over their season win total, and I was a little skeptical of Jordan Love, but he got it done for Marco. Your thoughts on this division? Maybe tell me about this poor Vikings team that is just riddled with injury before the season has even started. I'll be happy to focus on the Vikings team uh, in just a moment. But first, last year, the clients and I had a 5% big ticket play on the Packers over the total. And I'm not going to lie, Green Bay made me so freaking crazy over the first half of the season <laughs> when they kept on losing winnable games, losing on a last-second field goal. I was ripping my hair out. That being said, the Packers that I thought we were going to see, we ended up seeing down the stretch. They made me a bunch of money. They made my clients a bunch of money. And we cashed that 5% big ticket, part of the long-term 100 wins, 50 losses, three pushes that we put together for NFL season win totals. So I first released these reports back in 2001, Kel. That was a long, long time ago. The marketplace has changed a lot. Nonetheless, the concepts remain the same. And Green Bay last year coming into the season was clearly an undervalued commodity. The Packers look really good on paper. The Lions look really good on paper. The Bears, this is the Bears, the best Bears team I've seen on paper in the better part of the last decade, all right? They might be pretty good. Detroit and Green Bay, I think, are legit Super Bowl contenders. Which leaves us with the Minnesota Vikings, who have now lost their quarterback of the future in terms of J.J. McCarthy. He's out for the season, the guy who they drafted, the guy who they spent their top draft capital on. 38 new faces on their 90-man roster. 40% of the roster gone this past offseason, all right? You had a defense that improved from 28th to 13th in points allowed last year. This year, only one linebacker returns, questions of defensive tackle. I've got issues on this team in the secondary. Rookie kicker, punting question marks. And, oh, by the way, it's not going to be the rookie who everyone's excited about. It's freaking Sam Darnold at QB for Minnesota. And that's their best option. All right, you look at the receiving core. You got Justin Jefferson. Great. There's nobody else. This team is primed to take a big step back in 2024. I like the Vikings under their season win total. And I know it's been pounded, you know, and it hasn't been pounded nearly as hard as it should have been pounded with, with the Donald going out, or sorry, with McCarthy going out, forcing Donald to be the guy. He's never lasted an NFL season. I don't think he lasts this season either. Minnesota under. Ooh, that breaks my my heart, my purple little people eater heart. No, I understand this Vikings team is going to be rather interesting without a man named Kirk Cousins, which brings me to the NFC South. Non-primetime Kirk, we're going to see what he is made of for the Atlanta Falcons. The Bucks superseded expectations last year with Baker Mayfield. Saints, another big question mark here. Teddy, Talk to me about this division and why I should not be absolutely hammering Atlanta to win this thing. See, I wouldn't hammer Atlanta to win this thing just because I think Tampa Bay. Why is everyone devaluing Tampa Bay? They won the division last year. They won the division the year before. They won the division the year before. They won the division the year before. In the offseason, did Tampa lose anything? No. I think they're better this year than they were last year. But 
there's a thought, oh, Baker Mayfield. Well, last year was just kind of a mirage. And, you know, Baker Mayfield is a guy who developed chemistry with an elite receiving core behind a decent offensive line. It was like Todd Bowles. That guy's an idiot. Oh, Todd Bowles is an idiot. Okay, great. They won the division last year. All right. And there's nothing else in this division to be excited about. I'm not excited about the Saints under Dallas Allen. Dennis Allen, next time uh, uh, he puts together a good season as a head coach, it'll be his first time he's done that in his NFL career. I'm sure they're not excited about Carolina. You know, a Carolina, first year, first time NFL head coach, rookie coordinators, quarterback who showed us nothing last year, roster that was the worst team in the league last year. And, oh, they traded the number one pick away the year before. Carolina's not primed for a big leap up. Not even maybe, you know. Uh, and then you have Atlanta, who underachieved last year. There's lots of pieces in place for the Falcons, but they're also talking about an aging quarterback who hasn't been healthy enough to play in the preseason, coming off a serious injury with an offensive line that's got questions. I'm not sold on Atlanta being all that. Um, so I like Tampa. I think Tampa's the value in this division. I think Tampa to win the division is the one bet here that makes sense unless you're trying to bet uh, uh, a bunch of these teams under. Yeah, I uh, laid four with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to start the season. Uh, and uh, it's down to three now because everybody loves those Washington Commanders. I'm not so sure. Marco D'Angelo, talk to me about the NFC South before we get to best bets. Well, there's no question the NFC South is the uh, worst in the NFC, in my opinion. Uh, and I agree that this might be one where they all could go under their season win totals. That would be fun. Uh, what if you could put a little 14 parlay on that one? But, you know, Tampa Bay, I got to agree with Teddy that by default, they're the best team here. I think Atlanta's getting way too much love uh, because of the curtain. Cousins um, signing, and I'm going to point something out. Remember when Tom Brady went to Tampa Bay? Okay, Tom Brady's a first ballot Hall of Famer. Do you remember how many weeks it took before Tampa Bay started clicking? Uh, he had to learn a new system, get accustomed to the his new receivers and everything else. It wasn't good. I actually even remember a few games where Tom threw a pick six. We never would see that in New England. Uh, you're going to have some growing pains with Kirk Cousins. And worse for him is he's coming off a catastrophic injury. So uh, I don't see Atlanta being all that right out of the gate. And I agree with Tay. So for Atlanta, I'm going under the season win totals of nine and a half. That's one of my plays in this one. The other one with the Saints, I agree. Um, I just don't see anything on this team that excites me. I know Derek Carr from his days here uh, with the Raiders, and it's not that I don't like him. He's just he just he is what he is. He's not going to take you to the promised land, in my opinion. Uh, a lot of people might say, "Okay, but it's the second year in Dennis Allen's system." No, it's not. It's the second year in the system in New Orleans. But remember, one of the reasons why people had a lot of expectations and thought that that was a good landing spot for him last year is because he already knew this offense because he played for Dennis Allen uh, when Dennis Allen was with the Raiders. So uh, I agree with Teddy. I think uh, New Orleans is going to falter this year. I like the under with them on their season win totals of under seven and a half. So give me Atlanta. Give me the Saints under season win totals. And I guess that leaves Tampa Bay by default. All right. looks like we're all little Tampa Bay fans, except I will be on Atlanta week one, as I mentioned. Still have a little soft spot right here for good old Kirk. Speaking of soft spots, uh, the Chicago Bears fan base is going to be a little angry at me for about the 14th year in a row. I think this might be a, a record of a team that I am betting against I know Teddy said they should take a step forward. On paper, they look to be better. Marco said he expects the Lions to regress some as well, but I still think Chicago is the third best team in this division. Right now, you can get under eight and a half wins, plus 120 if you like to shop around. Caleb Williams, by all means, might be a better quarterback than Justin Fields, but he is going to take time to not only learn this offense, but to get the respect from that locker room and to show that he can be a leader. And until that point in time, I am taking this Bears team under for a few reasons. 
They're projected to face the eighth toughest schedule of offenses this season. Well, last year they ranked 30th in pressure rate and had only 30 sacks, which was almost dead last in the league. Guys, come on. You got to put pressure on opposing quarterbacks. Yes, Montez Sweat should help with that, but we shall see. The Bears let their quarterback absolutely get throttled last year. That offensive line let Justin Fields get sacked 50 times. Caleb ends up on his ass a few times, and he's going to make some mistakes. Maybe he may even go over and visit his mother in the crowd. I know. You guys already hate me. You guys have already had me canceled. You've already ruined my lives. So I am here to ruin yours. Give me that under eight and a half for the Chicago Bears. Marco D'Angelo, was that too aggressive? (laughs) <laughs> well, Kelly, uh, just send that fan mail to at Kelly in Vegas, <laughs> for everybody that you pissed off right now. But for me, Kelly, uh, I'm going to go back to the NFC East and I'm going to go to Philadelphia. And I know they caught breaks at the beginning of the season, but they didn't catch a single break in the second half of the season. And you look at how many games they had leads going into the fourth quarter and blew them. I think Vic Fangio is going to bolster that defense. And you talk about offensive coordinator Kellen Moore uh, will get the job done. Remember, last year uh, they had a new offensive coordinator last year because they lost their guy uh, after the Super Bowl season. That's what happens when you have success. You lose key elements. Uh, But I think they've got the right people in place. And as I said, I like the addition of Barkley at running back. I know people don't get excited in the NFL anymore for running backs, but I think this one makes a lot of sense for Philadelphia. Uh, He's going to be a bigger scoring threat uh, for them. And, of course, i got to mention, anytime it's fourth and one, we're going to cover. You know that. We're going to get that first down uh, with the tush push. So let's go ahead and get the Philadelphia Eagles over. Ten and a half wins this season. Buttering up our producer, Dan. His name is Marco D'Angelo. At Marco in Vegas, if you would like to send him some fan mail. Teddy Covers, <laughs> your best bet coincides with that Eagles over. Cowboys fans, yep. get your keyboards ready because Teddy Covers is about to uh, hurt some feelings as well. Yeah, at Teddy underscore Covers on Twitter. I'm happy to take. Uh, I'm not happy to take, but if you want to yell at me, by all means, yell at me. I don't care. I'm not a fan of any team. All right. I'm really not. I was a Jets fan 40 years ago. It's been a long time. And of course, as a fan, all that's happened is one disappointment after the next. I give up. And if you're a Dallas fan, maybe it's time that you give up with your fanhood as well. We like the Cowboys under. And look, every sharp dollar that's shown for Dallas since the season win totals open has come to the under. All right. Make no mistake about it. The markets see what I'm seeing. This has been a team that's been kicking the can down the road for years. When it comes to salary cap issues, well, not anymore. Last year, (laughs) between last year and this year, they lost five starters in free agency, two of them from the elite offensive line that doesn't look that elite anymore on paper. All right. Three of them from the defense, a defense that was remarkable last year in terms of turnover differential, you know, a plus 10 in turnover margin last year. Deron Bland returned five interceptions for touchdowns last year. Dan Quinn put together a brilliant, oh, Dan Quinn's the head coach in Washington now. Oops. I'll take the under five pick sixes this year for Bland. And I'll take the under plus 10 in turnover margin as well. You have contract issues everywhere. Dak Prescott's issue, uh, C.D. Lamb's issue, Micah Parsons' issue. Oh, that's your best players on both sides of the ball that are all dealing with contracts. And then you look at the schedule-wise. It's brutal, dude. They're facing the AFC North, a really good division. There are three extra games, Detroit, San Fran, Houston. They only have one home game between Baltimore on September 22nd and Philly on November 10th. And if Dallas doesn't get off to a hot start this year, you know everyone's going to be chirping. You know the critics are going to come out. And all these guys on expiring deals, like the head coach, it's going to be problematic. Cowboys under. So now look, shop around. I'm seeing anywhere between 10.5, 10, 9.5 on these win totals. There is variance from one book to the next. I've been under 10. I'd advise you to do the same. Teddy, before I let you go, I wanted to say thank you for filling in on Bet On It because you are our future specialist. Tell me, you mentioned since 2001, you've been doing your newsletter? I love it. No, 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 newsletter. uh, I've never had a newsletter. 
I've been doing season win reports since two. I mean, the first one came out in 2001. And I, I'm like, yeah, let's put together some. I mean, it wasn't even a report back then. I'm like, yeah, these are some opinions I had. And then you're like, wow, I did good with it. Let's try it again next year. And all right, I did good. I think it was like the third year that it wasn't officially a, a report. But since I started releasing my opinions on win totals, that was 2001, it's been 100 wins, 50 losses, three pushes. All right, that's 67% long term. It's a track record I'm proud of. All right, I put a ton of time over the summer into the win report, and it's been available for the clients. All summer long. You can get on board right now if you want. Just visit the website, wt.buzz backslash TC, and check out the season win total report. And the one thing that many uh, who have purchased in the past have said they like about it, you don't just get the opinions about which teams to bet over or under. You get a detailed written analysis of every squad and all kinds of bets you can make all season long. So it's not just the bets that you're getting. It's the information that comes with it that has proven very valuable for the client's one of the things I love about that report is that the people that buy it one year, they buy it the next year and the next year and the next year. I encourage you to check it out. WT.buzz backslash TC. Also, Teddy underscore covers on X. Marco in Vegas on X, and he's going to be with me here every single week for not only the NFL edition, but the college football edition of Bet On It. We've also got some surprises for you guys coming up. Week one college football right around the corner. Make sure you hit that like button. Get the subscribe so you never miss an episode. Jump in the comment section. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. We're here for you. We appreciate all of you for tuning in each and every week. We'll see you next week. So let's bet on it.